So what's going on? We're back. It's G-Sling, round number two. You know how it is. You know how serious it is out here. It's getting crazy. It's getting cold. It's getting happy. We're ready to go. Christmas, 11 more days. It's time. Round number two. Let's get going with the New York Jets. And we got to bring our boogie on. We got Boogie Basham, Carlos Basham from Wake Forest. An absolute monster on the edge. We need some help on the edge. This dude hopefully can be that guy that we've been looking for in who knows how long, right? We need somebody boogie onto the squad. Next, the Jacksonville Jaguars. They need left tackle. Cam Robinson is a liability. He needs to move into guard, in my opinion. He may not even be there next year. Anyway, you got to protect your young quarterback you just drafted with Justin Fields. Liam Eikenberg from Notre Dame, I think would be a slam dunk left tackle pick for him. On to 35 in the Cincinnati Bengals. They need secondary. Their secondary is dreadful to say and to be polite. I mean, that's being polite. It's not good. Asante Samuel Jr., this guy's got some great ability, great instincts in zone, solid man coverage. I really do like him. He kind of does remind me of his father. Player that I think could rise up boards. Absolute stud from FSU. Anyway, on to 26 36. Patrick Jones out of Pittsburgh going to L.A. I think they need to go ahead and start looking at a Melvin Ingram replacement. I mean, Melvin's cool, but I think it's time. You got to look at Patrick Jones. This guy is balling out at Pittsburgh. That defensive line, you can just see it straight up when you watch the tape. Number 91 flashes. He's a killer. And look at those jerseys. Aren't they cool? I'm telling you. On to 37. And you got Jalen Phillips, which... Some people believe he's better than Gregory Rousseau. And you know what? I've been watching him, and I, I'm not going to lie. This guy does look pretty dang good. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to watch more and more tape of this dude. He is a killer from the U. But Dallas figuring on, hey, we need somebody besides Demarcus Lawrence. Anyway, you get this dude, and, you know, I think he could be somebody who you never know, right? I think he could really develop. He's, he's crushing that quarterback from, uh, I don't even know what team that is, I can't even tell, I got my own pictures, but dude, oh my gosh, take an edge, I think that would really help this Cowboys defense, and we're not done yet, because you know what they got coming, anyway, we're on to 38, the Atlanta Falcons, Travis Etienne, they need a full-on explosive back, Todd Gurley is not an explosive back, unfortunately, anymore, Travis is the definition of explosion, he can give it to you in the pass game, he can give it to you in the run game, He's going to run a fast time. You know he is. This guy is a, just a dynamic dude. Get that Atlanta Falcons run game going. You've helped build your offensive line. Now it's time to really punch people in the mouth. Moving on to 36. And speaking of punching people in the mouth, mouth, you got Najee Harris. And uh, yeah, I like this fit here in Miami. They need a full-on three-down runner. Najee is that, good, is that dude. I'm telling you, this guy is just insane. He is uh, the definition of a three-down guy. I really like Najee, and uh, you know he might take him a little bit of time in, in the NFL to get going. He plays a little high, but I think he's going to work it out. I really do. I think he could be their Derrick Henry going forward. On to 40. You got the Dallas Cowboys, and I was hinting before on that defensive line. We got to stop the run, right? It's been a problem. Marvin Wilson hopefully can come in day one and be a productive run stopper and maybe even a pass rusher for him. But we'll see. I like Marvin. I'm telling you, this guy, he's got some serious potential and he's ready to go for the Dallas Cowboys. On to 41. The Philadelphia Eagles got to think about Jason Kelsey's replacement. He's been a stud for him, but they need interior offensive line help in general. This dude can play guard for now. That's fine. You know, we have no problem. They have no problem with it in Philly, I'm sure. They need help on that offensive line. It has been dreadful. Now, injuries obviously have been a problem, but I think Creed Humphrey could really help stabilize your offensive line and help build your, your core unit there going forward. On to 42, and Christian Barmore for the Detroit Lions. They're another team that has just been terrible on that defensive line. They need to rebuild. So you get Christian and really help build that defensive line back to hopefully somewhere where it's at least decent on to wait a minute we got the news updated she's like today it's cold that's the news man i'm freezing anyway on to 43 you got saving collins to the la chargers with the traded pick that they got from the 49ers you get saving collins 
this guy could be that true Mike linebacker alongside with Kenneth Murray, who they picked last year. I like this dude coming out of Tulsa. I think he could be a monster. On to 44. And you got Levi Onzawiski from Washington. Denver needs help on that defensive line as well. They're still looking to rebuild. This dude could play three tech for him. I really like him. Maybe even four I. We'll see. He could be a real monster and a problem. He's a wrecker. He's a mean streak. Ready to happen. On to 45, Chris Alave, the Giants. I told you earlier in the first round we were hinting at a receiver. Chris Alave, this guy can just play football. Reminds me of a T. Higgins sort of dude. Isn't going to test crazy, but he knows how to play football. He looks, He's fast in pads. And from the Ohio State University, this guy's everything you look for from a receiver. Well, you know what I'm saying. He's a stud. On to 46, Darian Kendrick, the Jaguars still trying to address the secondary because it's been such a big problem. They can't stop nobody. They couldn't stop the Jets, probably, if they pay- played them. And that's uh, that's interesting. So uh, moving on to 47, you got Kyle Trask. The Bears finally take a quarterback. They get Kyle Trask in the second round. He falls, right? There's going to be one quarterback that falls. I'm telling you, whether you believe it or not, it's going to be one guy who falls. In this mock, we got Kyle Trask falling. We'll see if it happens. But going to the Bears, I hope the Bears fans, you know, can get their quarterback and, you know, go from there. Because they got a team that can really win. It's just they need their quarterback. Uh oh, we're on to 48. And it's Baby Gronk. He kind of even looks like Gronk. And that's why maybe that's why they call him Baby Gronk. They didn't get their tight end in the first round. They avoided Kyle Pitts. But you know what? Baby Gronk is that dude. I think Pat has everything that the Patriots look for and actually is maybe even a better fit for him at, uh, in their system. So you get Trey Lance. You get Baby Gronk. I think this would be insane for them. On to 49. You get Zion Johnson, which I was trying to think, okay, as a Vegas Raiders person, who do I pick? Because they always throw wrenches in those mock drafts. I'm telling you. So I had to figure on, okay, who would be somebody I wouldn't guess them picking, but maybe just enough. So I'm like, ah, this dude seems like it from Boston College. And yeah, I like it. So he's a good guard. And, you know, Boston College has been churning. I mean, they're just crazy at churning out guards and offensive linemen in general. So I like Zion here to the Oakland Raiders who need to rebuild their offensive line as well. It's been a problem for them. Get their run game going uh, and build on that group. Anyway, on to 50. You got Trey Smith. This is another team that has struggled with guard, right? They just haven't, you know, ever since Marshall Yonda left, they haven't been the same running, right? They need to replace Ben Powers. And I'm thinking of the other guy. I'm going blank on his name. Uh, But Bradley Boozman, is it? I think it's Bradley Boozman, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, both guys need to, uh, have been struggling this year for him. They need a replacement. Trey Smith is that definition of a badass he can come in and be a beast and help that run game get back to what they were. Alongside Rashad Bateman, this offense might be scary next year. On to 51, and the Washington football team need to continue to build their offensive line as well. So they say, hey, let's go get Alex Leatherwood. I realize Cornelius Lucas has not been bad, actually, a left tackle. I think you can move, you know, whether Morgan Moses is going to be there long term. I, I don't know. I forget if he's a free agent or not. We'll break that fully down in their, their full mock draft. But I think this would be a good fit for him. They could play play him at guard or whatever. They just need help on that offensive line, help build that group out, and you go from there. On to 52, and Jalen Tyman for the Arizona Cardinals. This is another team that needs to rebuild their defensive line. So you start out by get, getting Jalen, and uh, as he can see, he's got the fists up. I'm ready to go and uh, help build that group there. 53, you got Chad Shuret. From North Carolina, this guy's one of those dudes I think could fit into this system. Can play kind of, you know, I think he could play in, you know, this hybrid sort of role. And, uh, you know, he's, I mean, that North Carolina defense, you know, honestly, their offensive line too is one of them. But this team's really surprised me with some areas that they've, they've really got some good players on this roster. But, and they're cool helmets too. Anyway, get Chaz. I think that would really help out your linebacking group and help Jerome Baker. Hopefully, Jerome Baker can step up, man. He needs to play a little bit better. Come on, Jerome. I thought you were going to play uh, anyway, but go from there. On to 54, you got Jordan Davis from Georgia onto the Tampa Bay Bucks because I think you got to re- you know continue adding up. And a comic in Sue could be gone, right? So add another dude who could play three-tech for him. 
and hopefully Vito Vega comes back healthy and you got somebody there with some power. On to 55, the Jets need help at receiver. Elijah Moore, he's got more than what the Jets have right now at receiver. This guy is a beast, in my opinion, in the slot. Now, I get it, you got Jameson Crowder, but you know what? You, you got to get their best receiver. Elijah Moore is a good separator, good route runner. He just has, nobody can tackle this guy either in open space. He is a beast. I like him a lot. On to 56, Dylan Moses to the Tennessee Titans, trying to stop the run, help stop the run. You got to stop the run in this division versus the Colts. And, you know, hey, Dylan Moses is that thumper. They've been looking for a thumper. I get it. You know, you got Rashawn um, going blank on his name. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, going blank on his name. I'll remember it in a second. But go ahead and get another linebacker. Really, really help this group out. You need some more help there and stopping the run. On to 57. And Stanford corner to the Seattle Seahawks. That's an interesting one, right? I've never heard that one before. <laughs> Paulson Adebo, I think this dude has some serious potential. We'll see how he tested the combine, right? I think he could be a 4'6", a four, high 4'5 four, guy, depending. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. But he that's why he could fall. He could even fall into the third round. Going to have to really see what he does in those athletic scores because you know how the combine is. If you score a 4'6", you're automatically terrible. Yeah, that's Richard Sherman. But anyway, moving on now. Wait a second. It's happy birthday. Happy birthday, DK. It's your birthday. The Jets should have drafted you. But, oh, well, happy birthday, DK Metcalf, you are a beast. Sorry, my singing is terrible. You can skip that. <laughs> Please skip it. Anyway, on to 58, Andre Sisco. This dude is insane. One of maybe my favorite free safety in the entire draft from Syracuse. They're going to let John Johnson go, probably. They won't be able to pay nobody. Andre Sisco is an upgrade, in my view. This guy is a hawk, literally a hawk, Tony Hawk. Better than Tony Hawk. Anyway, Andre Sisko is a monster. I like him a lot. Keep watching film on this guy. I love him. Oh, man, he's insane. On to 59, Tyson Campbell from Georgia. The Browns need corner help bad besides Denzel Ward. Tyson Campbell has the upside. We'll see. He's got to improve his technique. But we're going to take Tyson Campbell at 59. We need some more help at corner. Letting Terrence Marshall go. And, uh, sorry, Terrence Mitchell. And Greedy Williams just hasn't been able to get on the field. So we'll have to wait and see on that. Tyson Campbell's one of those guys. Boom. There you go. On to number 60. Baron Browning. The Bills have had, a, you know, if, if there's one area that I see on that defense, other than the pass rush that they've struggled with, it's stopping the run. So what are we going to do? We're going to help them stop the run. Get a good, solid linebacker. Can help Tremaine Edmonds hopefully be a better player than Matt Milano as well and getting that team to stop the run. On to 61, and you got to Kadarius Tooney. Finally, they're like, Aaron Rodgers like, thank you. Thank you, Lord, please. Oh, my gosh. You got me a receiver. Kadarius Tooney is going to keep rising. He's rising up boards. He is explosive. This guy, is, they call him the human joystick for a reason. He's that dude in this draft. He can be a help, a big help to this team and Aaron Rodgers. On to 62, Javante Williams. You're thinking, wait, what about ben Benny Snell or, you know, Andre or um, McFarlane, Anthony McFarlane? You know what? I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. I just don't think those are the guys. I, I don't know. We'll see. I like Javante Williams. To me, he's a perfect fit for him. He just screams the Pittsburgh Steeler running back. He's got good vision and uh, just that straight power to speed. I think he'd be a meaty upgrade. I think they're probably going to let James Conner go. So get yourself a good stud running back. They haven't taken a running back high in the, what, the second round since Le'Veon Bell. So go ahead and get Javante Williams. That North Carolina run game is insane. On to uh, 63, Darius Stills to the New Orleans Saints. They could let Sheldon Rankins go. So I see this dude coming in and being an immediate replacement from West Virginia. This guy's a monster, a wrecker up the middle can really bring some help onto that defense, even though they've already been pretty good on that defensive line. But, you know, hey, they got to figure on, we got to replace Sheldon Rankin, so there you go. Now the last pick, Javian Holland to the Kansas City Chiefs, who are going to probably lose Daniel Sorensen, so they figure, hey, we need another, you know, a strong safety. We need somebody who can play, you know, help us out quite a bit with the Honey Badger 
and Javion Holland could be that guy for him. So, uh, dude, Oregon needs to go back to the old uniforms. I'm tired of all the crazy uniforms. They need to go back. Oh, the crazy uniforms are cool, but they go back to the old Joey Harrington days, man. I'm telling you. Anyway, I hope you guys did enjoy the mock draft and everything. Let me know what you think on the, you know, the feedback and everything. You know, agree, disagree. Totally understand. Uh, some of these picks might be a little bit crazy. But I uh, hope you did enjoy and everything. Like I said, my name's G Sling. I hope you have a great day, and I'll be talking to you really soon. You're going to be like, oh, my God, he's coming back again. Anyway, I hope you have a good one. I'll talk to you soon.